Hey friends, tonight we are going to be dining at Walt Disney World's newest restaurant, Amare, here at the Walt Disney World Swan Reserve. And I looked over the menu and they have a porterhouse steak on the menu. So I figured I'd come out and see where it ranks among my favorite Disney World steaks. And then also just to walk around and enjoy the resort. Fantasia Gardens, one of Disney's miniature golf courses across the street. So I'd like to show you that as well. Anywho's, let's go do this. Right here is the Walt Disney World Swan Reserve and it's located like honestly right across the street from Hollywood Studios. You can see the Tower of Terror right there and then right here is Fantasia Gardens, the Disney World miniature golf course and this is all based off of uh, Fantasia so they have all of the different animals and characters from the movie and I've never actually been here before. Our dining reservation is just about 45 minutes away, so I don't have time to do a round of miniature golf, but I do want to show you around a little bit and maybe come back and do it. I would love to actually have like a video where I went around and did the miniature golf at Disney World. I did the other one, but I've never been here before. It is really easy to park here if you ever do want to come out and play miniature golf or visit the Swan Reserve. It's free after validation. So if you plan on coming out and golfing, you get your parking validated and it shares a parking lot with the Swan Reserve right here. So like it was super easy to park here. I'm also very excited to just kind of browse around a new Walt Disney World Resort. I've never been in here and I've been watching this being built for the past couple months and I've been really anticipating coming out and tonight's the night and we're going to have some good food too. Look at how awesome this golf course is. We've got Sorcerer Mickey right here, right in front of the Tower of Terror and I just love it. I actually, I feel like maybe if we have time we should come back out and play. I mean it's going to be hard especially since I'm by myself but this is really awesome. I'm really like super pumped about this and I love how it's got hidden Mickeys everywhere. I think I have decided we are going to come back out and we are going to play some miniature golf after we have dinner and that's going to be a fun experience. I just love all of the attention to detail in each of the holes. I think it's an 18 hole course and each one of them is just so cool and they have special effects and it even plays music too. So we're definitely coming back out. I am like super excited about this. Now that we actually have plans for after dinner, we're going to head over to the resort and check that out and get all checked in for dinner. And I'm excited. I'm in a good mood for a good steak. And also they have some prawns on the menu that I think I might want to try. But we will be back, Fantasia Gardens and Sorcerer Mickey Apprentice Topiary. Look at that. Oh, it's just so festive. I really, really love it. And it's literally right there. Like you can just walk across the street. That's probably a cool added benefit for staying here at the Swan Reserve. Let me know in the comments if you've ever played miniature golf at Walt Disney World before. I have played at Winter Wonderland before, but never here. So if you've played at both of them, let me know which one you like better, Fantasia Gardens or Winter Wonderland. That's the one that's over by Blizzard Beach. And I don't know, I'm gonna find out tonight hopefully, and I'm gonna be able to play both of them now. We're gonna actually head inside now. And another thing I just realized is you can walk to the boardwalk as well from here. You can actually cross the street and go right on over. Right there's the Swan and Dolphin and the boardwalk's right there. It's got a crosswalk and everything. Probably I'd say five minutes. Well, as soon as you walk in, I'm kind of impressed with how it looks. And we have to go up these gigantic escalators here. Look at those, they're huge. Honestly, I feel like it's the stairway to heaven right here. We're going all the way up. I'm not too sure where the restaurant is or where the lobby is. This is my first time actually being here. So I'm kind of experiencing it along with you guys. Oh, well, it looks like we found the lounge and we found the uh, check-in lobby area. Look at this, very pretty up here. And this is a really nice lounge, holy moly. Okay, I am really impressed with how homey this lobby and resort is already. I love the furniture. I love how it's got plenty of spots where you can just sit down and enjoy drinks because the lounge is right there. 
I wanted to take you all the way up to the 15th floor because they have a special view, like observation terrace area where you have amazing views. And I guess that's why they call it the view of all of Walt Disney World, but it's closed today for a private event. So I came outside on the third floor, which is where the restaurant is. And this is where the pool is too. The pool is on the third floor. And I think that is kind of cool. There's a couple of people in there swimming at the moment, so I don't want to show you too much, but take a look at that. Right there's the pool, and right here is like the resort. And we're on the third floor, like we're elevated up. I don't know how to show it to you. Oh yeah, maybe over here I can kind of take a peek, see down. So we're, we're about three floors up. Isn't that really fancy? Right here is the restaurant, and it doesn't set to open until 5 p.m., and I have a 5 p.m. reservation, but I'd like to show you guys when I have the opportunity of what the restaurant looks like without a lot of people being in here dining. And I love it. Look at it. It's very nice in here. Very classy. And I kind of like just the way it looks. And a nice view as well. I think we can look right out that window right there. And uh, I think you might be able to stare at Tower of Terror. Now we are all checked in and seated at our table. Time to look over the menu and uh, order some food. I love the fact that this restaurant has an open kitchen as well. So you can actually see right in there and watch the chefs at work. And a nice little pizza oven there because I do know they have some flatbreads. But we're here for the porterhouse. It's also really awesome to see real menus again. Like actual, actual menus. Not the ones that you have to pull up on your QR code. Let's take a look at the menu here. And the thing that I was excited to try is the Bisteca alla Florentine, which is a roasted and grilled Angus beef porterhouse served with pearl onion, carrot, rosemary, potato, medley, and a red wine sauce. But they also have uh, some flatbreads down here and they have a sopracetta, which is something else I'm interested in trying. And overall, they just have some good entrees. Small menu, they've got sea bass, citron chicken, grilled mahi-mahi, some handmade dumplings, and then for appetizers, they've got the fired tiger prawns and and fried calamari, charred octopus, all of these sound good. And I like small menus because I feel like the smaller the menu is, the more successful they are at executing it. So I'm excited to see what we're gonna get here. I think I'm gonna start off with the tiger prawns, which I'm so excited. If you don't know what prawns are, they're kind of like shrimp. Uh, some people say it has like the same texture. I feel like they are the same, but these ones just seem like they're gonna be much more infused with lemon. And that's something I'm kind of excited to try. I don't think I've actually ever had like a fancy prawn before. A fancy prawn. <laughs> I like the sound of that. And speak of the fancy prawns because here they are. Take a look at that. Don't they look so amazing? I cannot wait to try these. We got the little lemon there, and they look so huge, don't they? Like, these are massive. The first prawn of the day. And I think you get uh, one, two, three, four, five of them. Five prawns for $19, but they are pretty big, so here we go. Holy moly. <laughs> These are so good. <laughs> Can I just say, I think I would come here just for these prawns. They are so, so good. And you can just really taste the lemon flavor in there. And it's like just taking a gigantic bite full and just getting a, like a whirl of flavor. Like it is so good. Wow, totally impressed. And now I have like such high expectations for everything else that we're gonna be eating tonight. The prawns got me feeling some type of way here. <laughs> Honestly, they are so, like I said, I can't get over them. I really can't get over them. I can't believe there's only five. If, if I could get more, I would, honestly. <laughs> and you got all of that sauce in there. And you really just gotta get all the lemon zest as you can and get it all soaked up. That's the way. Also looks like we've got a complimentary bread service and it comes with hummus uh, and olive tapalan on top. And look at this bread. We're gonna have to test it all out here. It looks like good bread though. Looks like very good bread. I think the bread, time to see if the bread passes the test. There we go. 
Oh yeah, nice sesame seeds on the bottom. That's good bread. And I like the hummus too. So it's like you're getting some free hummus. As we're waiting for the rest of our food, I wanted to show you guys the view out the window. Just take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? A nice cotton candy sky, a little bit of a sunset, and I love it. This is such a nice homey restaurant, and I love how we got a little Christmas tree right over here as well. Now that the prawn business is over with, which those were going to be hard to top. Like, they were so, so good. Uh, we're going to dive into the Sopacetta flatbread. And this is actually something I'm excited for, too. And it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Right here it is. And honestly, like, I thought flatbread, like, it was going to be a little bit smaller. I mean, it's still a very small, like, pizza or flatbread. Uh, I would say maybe 10 inches. But, uh, yeah, look at it. Doesn't that look so, so good? Oh man, the meats, the red onions, the cheese, and the tomato. Nice undercarriage there. And I'm definitely not going to be eating all this. I'm going to be taking some of this home and having some cold pizza in the morning because we got the porterhouse still coming out. But I can't wait to try this. So here we go. Well, that is a good, crisp, clean tasting flatbread. Like, I really do like it. The crust is nice and it has a little char on the bottom. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for $19, though, I think you can probably get a little bit better pizza if you wanted to, a better flatbread, but this is pretty good. I do like the sopasada, though. Normally, when it comes to pizzas or flatbreads, the crust or the toppings actually stick out the most to me. I'm not, like, the biggest fan of cheese, but the tomatoes on here are so, so good. And it's not like a tomato sauce. Like, these are just chunks of tomato like in there and it's good like it is so so good i don't know i kind of like i i really do like it but the prawns like if i had to choose an appetizer the prawns are probably the thing i would go with the prawns were amazing this is still good though <laughs> and now it is time for the main event and i don't think you guys are going to be able to handle this but oh my lord look at this oh it is so beautifully cooked. Look at the char on the outside, just the way I like it. This porterhouse looks perfection. If you guys don't know the difference between a porterhouse and a T-bone, and this is a higher up count, like a higher up cut. So you have a little bit more of the filet on this side. So you have a little bit of a filet on this side and then a little bit of the strip on this side. And look how thick it is. It's about one and a half inches, which is very good for uh, a porterhouse. And I am so excited to dive into this. Along with the vegetable medley, like the potatoes, the carrots, and the onions look good, and the red wine sauce. So we're gonna, uh, I can't wait to cut into this. I am so pumped. I think we're gonna try the strip side first, which is right here on this side of the bone. It's a big, big bone in there. And we're gonna cut into it right here. This looks so, so good. Oh, wow. I think we got a contender here. We got a contender, folks. <laughs> we have multiple ways we need to approach this steak. First, we're gonna try the strip side, then we're gonna try the filet side, and then we're gonna try it with the red wine sauce. So here we go, strip side, and I am excited. Okay, we're just gonna eat it. Here we go. This is up there, guys. I'm gonna say it now. This is really, really up there. Now we're gonna try the filet side and this might just seal the deal. Oh my lord. This shouldn't be like this. It's just so good. Oh my lord. <laughs> this is such a good steak. Holy moly. Now the filet side and the strip side was so, so good. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. Oh my lord. This is truly beyond amazing right here. Like, it is that good. I don't know where it's gonna rank, but it's gonna rank up there high for me. And someone's getting kicked out of the top five, I'll tell you that. 
<laughs> now I'm gonna grab a little potato with the filet, a little bit of that onion right there. That's how you do it. You can really taste the lemon oil inside of like the steak because it is finished with the lemon oil. It's not overpowering lemon, but it is a Mediterranean style. And I think they use Lynn's beef here. So like the beef itself is top notch. And honestly, I can't wait to try the red wine sauce. But we're gonna try a little bit of the vegetables and potatoes with the steak and then the red wine sauce. <laughs> We're gonna pour a little bit of this red wine sauce right here on the filet side. There you go. Don't wanna do too much because you don't know if it's gonna be better or worse with the red wine sauce, but we're gonna find out. Now we're gonna cut into it. Or we can just pull it apart because that's what we can do. Look at that. You can just literally pull it right off. Now with the red wine sauce. Here we go. I'm putting some more of that on there. Oh. Oh. We're just about at that point where we're just going all in on the red wine sauce. Look at that. Oh. I love it. And look at it, it's so close to the bone too. You can just take your knife and just kind of go like that, right along the bone. That steak right there took my number two spot. My second favorite steak at Walt Disney World. And, and almost took the number one spot. The big difference is, is I love ribeyes. And I have to stick with Shula's uh, 22 ounce cowboy ribeye is my number one still. But this is number two and the value is better than Shula's though. I do have to say that because it's $69 for that steak. $69 and it comes with the side. Uh, the 22 ounce ribeye over at Shula's is $72 and it comes with no sides so like the values there and also the 24 ounce ribeye at space 220 was hundred and twenty dollars so this is the best bang for your buck and it has a unique flavor especially with the lemon oil and it was cooked to perfection a fantastic steak number two almost took number one though literally so close if they had uh maybe uh the, the like a cowboy ribeye here and the way that they cooked it i probably would have it would have took my number one spot it definitely would have and once you thought i was done i pull you back in to try some cannolis <laughs> look at that that is very very pretty i really really like it and thank you chef the chef sent this out to me actually so thank you so much and i can't wait to actually try it i'm afraid i don't want to ruin it though because it looks so beautiful look at the way it's presented there but we gotta lift it up it's cannoli time i was not expecting to have dessert tonight because I ended up getting two appetizers and an entree, but like I said, said the chef actually sent it out, so I gotta try it, and I'm excited because it does look beautiful. But like my main goal always when I make these videos is to give you guys such a variety. So that's why I always sometimes try to order two entrees or two appetizers, just so that I can give you guys a good perspective. Sometimes I don't eat them all, like for instance today, I'm taking home uh, basically a whole entire flatbread, and I get to have that maybe tomorrow for uh, lunch, but uh, that way I give you two options that you can look at, and it's always fun, it's, it's amazing. And now we're gonna dive into some cannolis, like I said. So here we go, cannoli. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Amari has hit it out of the park with everything I've had so far today. Like honestly, the cannolis are so so good. I am so shocked with these. And it's got like a nice like lemon zest. Everything is a lot of fruit oils. And this is just oh wow, so good. And the prawns, we can't forget about the prawns, the steak, and then the flatbread. I am truly impressed. And this is probably one of my best dining experience overall. Now we are all finished and it got really dark outside. So I hope Fantasia Gardens is still open. We'll have to actually go and check it out. But it did get really, really dark out. We watched the whole entire sunset from inside this restaurant. Oh look, there I am, hello. I'm gonna have to run my pizza out to my car before we go over to uh, Fantasia Gardens. We're going down to one. Oh. Going down. Nope. Yes, I am. Okay. 
and I just looked it up. Fantasia Gardens doesn't close till 10 o'clock. Till 10 o'clock, so it's open actually pretty late. I don't know why I was thinking it closed at like 7 o'clock, but yeah, it's open till 10. And it doesn't look like there's anybody over here really playing. So we might have like the course all to ourselves, which would be convenient because then we could take our time and take lots of cool photos. There we go, we got our putter and we got our ball and we're ready to go. And I just found out there's two uh, courses here. They have the Fantasia with like all the characters on this side and then they have the hardest miniature golf in the world, they said on the other side. It's all about precision putting. And they said uh, in the Golf Digest it's rated the hardest and most difficult. So we're not gonna do that one. We're all about the characters. So now we're on hole one. Now I'm not gonna show every single hole uh, because I feel like it would take a while, but uh, I'm just gonna show you guys the fun ones that I have fun with. And I'm not gonna keep score since it's just myself. Maybe I'll set up the camera down here and then maybe catch a hole in one. That would be amazing, right? Well, that one was kind of fun because you have to hit it hard enough to go all the way through the instrument and then it'll actually go up and around here and then down around and then out here and you kind of get close to a hole in one but if you don't hit enough it actually takes it down there and you have to go around so i shot two now we're coming up on the third hole and this one looks like a lot of fun. I mean, honestly, they all look like a lot of fun <laughs> and they all have like a little music note here that gives you a little bit of a reading. So it's kind of like a storytelling as you go about. I am not doing that great. I mean, I wasn't the greatest golfer to begin with, but now we're at the Nutcracker and it's all fun. I'm not keeping score or anything like that, but it is kind of fun doing it, you know what I mean? Now I am excited. We're coming up on some of my favorite characters from Fantasia. Oh, look, it's got little uh, blocker there, little mushroom people. Look, it's got like a little mushroom that pops up. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, I can't wait to try this. Oh, it fell inside the mushroom now. Oh. Well, this one seems a little interesting. We gotta go inside of a cave. Might be a little bit of an echo in here. Anybody in here? Nope, I think it's just us. I can't tell where the, uh, where the hole's at here. It is so, like, dark in here. I can't see the hole anywhere. I think we have to go down here to find it. I don't know actually. Maybe maybe it's on this side. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> ah! Okay. That is really cool. <laughs> it kind of scared me a little bit, but that is really cool. As you walk through here, you'll see what happens. Let's see, maybe I'm going to put it right here. Yeah, we might be able to see it from here. No way! No way! <laughs> that is awesome. Hold it one. I can't believe I just got a hole in one, but I was trying to show you what it does right here. Watch. <laughs> oh, that is awesome, isn't it? This is so cool. It's actually really easy though. All you have to do is hit it right down the center right there and that's it. I'm not sure if I got that on video or not, but I did get a hole in one on that and I feel very proud and accomplished right there. Skipping on to number 12 now and it's the dance of the hours. This is one of my favorites because I love the little hippos and we're going to try to Knocking in that crocodile's mouth. It's gonna be a little difficult, don't you think? 
Well, now they just keep on getting better and better. This looks really fancy, doesn't it? I like this one. It's very pretty over here. I could see someone taking some like school photos or something, but I guess we're gonna try. Here we go. Gonna try doing this one one-handed. Here we go. Can I get a mulligan? We're coming up on the Sorcerer's Apprentice and I see a lot of water on the ground and those are the mops with the buckets and there's water leaking out of them. So I'm kind of like hesitant to come over this way or set my camera up anywhere because I'm pretty sure we get wet. So I don't know what to do. I guess I'm just gonna probably set it back here and see what happens. I'm glad we didn't set the camera up. I kind of knew it was gonna happen. Look, I had it like, I had a shoot in the, the water itself. And these buckets literally throw water out on you. So, gotta be careful when you're walking under here. Kind of just plays. Oh, and look at how close I was. Can you believe that? Oh, so close. Don't you want to go in your home? There we go. Now it's time for Sorcerer Apprentice Mickey himself. And this is the one we saw when we were coming over and exploring. So I'm excited, I mean 17, so we got only two holes left. This one you gotta shoot up, and then it comes down over here, and has to land right there. So we have to make it come to the right. So it's gonna be a little difficult, but we're gonna try. I mean, we failed at every other course, And finally, the 18th hole. Look at this. I'm pretty sure the ball doesn't come back from this point on. We just shoot it in there and say goodbye. So here we go. And I guess with that, we're done. I played 18, I shot 18, what can I say? No, really, I, like I said, I didn't keep score and I don't. I got I got one hole in one and that was all. Well, technically two hole in ones because at the end there, that is a hole in one, that's one shot. So I don't know if you play that or not, but the rest was like two to three and even a four or five in there. I mean, give or take. Anywho, this was a lot of fun. I wish I would've known, like I said, I would've loved to do this with some friends. They serve beer here. Can you have, imagine having a night out where you're doing some miniature golf, drinking some beer and relaxing. But overall, I had a great night. I had so much fun. Uh, I enjoyed my food very much. Like I said, second best steak at Walt Disney World. And uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.